I'm Eric from Constant Diversion. We're at it again this week, asking a simple question of why journalists are not holding developers accountable for releasing broken games. We'll call this episode, Who Watches the Watchmen? Let's dive in. So why are we reviewing broken games? Stop. I mean, what other entertainment media do we even have to answer this question? In an age of constantly being inundated with patches, we see more and more of this over and over again. And yet, over and over again, we seem willing to buy it. Pre-sales soar in an age where companies goad us into buying unfinished products with sleazy promises of exclusive goods that we'll probably never need, all the while never enlightening us on whether their products will even be playable. This is where video game journalism is supposed to be our white knight against the evil developer trying to bleed every last dime of our hard-earned money out of their mediocre game. Instead, the lack of transparency is truly appalling. If you've watched any of our streamcasts, you'll know that I'm not a fan of the direction Metal Gear as a series has taken. To sum up another topic, I was confident that the story was finished in Metal Gear Solid 4 and that anything after was purely a cash grab. But in regards to transparency, the reviewers of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain reviewed the game at Konami headquarters and were only given 40 hours to complete the game, which frankly isn't enough time. But, hey, I have to acknowledge the simple truth that the game actually worked. Good on Konami, I guess. But more to the point. Why are developers dictating how we are allowed to review a game? And that doesn't even take into account embargo practices. Media outlets don't have to abide by those, by the way, but they choose to. And if the consequences of not following the embargo is that a review will take longer to come out, isn't that preferable to a dishonest review? Indeed, most critics seem content ushering in an age of apathy where consumers should not only applaud these broken games, but should also recognize that they're a 9 out of 10 or whatever. The contrast between their fiction and the actual reality is becoming more and more apparent, but hey, when levitating corpses get you game of the year, who gives a shit? That's not to say all these games are terrible, or even necessarily bad. And thanks to a very active mod community on the PC, some games turn a complete 180 and become masterpieces like Fallout New Vegas. Or hey, we can even improve Skyrim by actually having dragons fly in the appropriate direction. The question remains, however, how can stuff like this even be released? Who among them has the audacity to say, screw them, they'll buy it anyway? Part of it is looking in the mirror, but it might help if there was a shred of integrity on the mainstream review community. What right do these publishers have to charge their fans $60 to serve as their own personal quality control team? But the issue could never be merely the overinflated scores of a select few game critics. Sure, it's part of it. But another reason we're so eager to guzzle the Kool-Aid is because of the hype that swirls around these publishers and their products. But again, where does this hype come from? You guessed it, video game journalists. And some of these glitches and bugs are downright embarrassing. Uh, take a look at this freeze, for instance. Of all the times for a game to lock up, who am I kidding? It probably already happened a hundred times before this, but just imagine, if you will, you're playing late into the evening, perhaps 2 a.m., and your girlfriend wakes up to get something to drink, and this is displayed in the living room. Bam! In 55-inch LCD glory. Try explaining that one. Okay, going back, is there any form of media where reporting and advertising become so synonymous that you can't even tell which is which? I know it's naive to say. After all, MSNBC and Fox News exist, but at least their audience is mostly okay to buy what they're selling. It's simple fanboyism, but instead of Microsoft and Sony, it's Bill O'Reilly and Rachel Maddow. Look at all the reviewers, gamers, hate that word, and various agitators that were so eager to remind you how much better Bloodborne would have been on the PC. But it's not on the PC, so what's the point? Don't think for a second that your allegiance to a product or a corporation doesn't lessen the liability of the publisher. They're literally banking on it. Think about that the next time you post a disparaging comment on a review because they gave something a 7 out of 10. In closing, I would just like to say, no, beg. Can the media please start holding these people to a higher standard? Stop being a slave to your comments section and have a little integrity? We buy this shit, you know. It should play. And before the masses shout that the onus falls solely on the consumer, I get that, as I expressed, but part of being careful is being informed. In fact, that's pretty much all of it. 
I'm not asking for Edward R. Murrow ethics here, but give me a break. Gaming is not a cheap hobby, and it's not going away. Is it too much to ask for an ounce of principled objectivity here? In this day and age, well, it would appear so.